everybody. Welcome to mini beginner's crash course through Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episodes 7 through 10, we learned how we can measure the relevance of your search results and covered concepts like precision, recall, and scoring. We also learned how to write queries to retrieve the documents we want and how to fine tune the precision or recall of a match query. So let's zoom out and talk about why we're learning about these topics. So one of the benefits of integrating Elasticsearch into our app is that we can create a great search experience for our users. For example, we can write different types of Elasticsearch queries best suited for what the user is searching for. We could also fine tune precision and recall to customize what our users see in their search results. Lastly, we could also fine tune scoring to customize the order of search results that are presented to the user. Now, all of these factors can affect the user's search experience. So what type of search experience do we want to create in our app? Well, let's use Yelp as an example. We definitely want a search bar where a user can search for things. And we want to ensure that our search results are precise, but also have enough recall to return as many related results as possible. And we want a search experience that is smart. We want it to take misspellings into account and make auto suggestions. And it'd be really awesome if our users could filter by certain categories. And if your app is partly sponsored by specific companies, you may want the sponsored results to appear at the top of the page as a separate entity or at the top of search results, which involves tweaking the scores of the search results as well. So all of these could be customized by writing specific Elasticsearch queries in the back end of your app. So when it receives a search request from client, it could send an appropriate query to Elasticsearch. Then Elasticsearch will do its thing and send the results back to the backend, which will send the results back to the client. So in the previous episodes, we got our feet wet on writing these basic queries. In the next four episodes, we'll explore advanced queries designed to search text fields. We'll also go over how these queries can be used to further customize what information is retrieved for the users. Today, we're going to focus on the match query and the match phrase query and learn when to use these queries. And the best way to show you how these queries work is by sending these queries to Elasticsearch. To follow along, you need to first set up Elastic Cloud or download Elasticsearch in Kibana. Then add the news headlines data set to Elasticsearch. Then have the two windows open side by side. One window will have the Kibana console pulled up and the other will have the part three repo open. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, instructions on completing steps one through three have been covered in previous episodes and the episode related to the steps have been included here for you. For those of you who've been following along, complete step four by going to the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of the video. Once you get to the page, click on part three and have this pulled up in a separate window. All right, let's get organized here. I have two windows open. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part three repo. The Kibana console is split into two panels. The left panel is where you send requests to Elasticsearch. The right panel shows you the response from Elasticsearch. For the rest of the episode, we'll be sending query requests from Kibana to Elasticsearch, and we'll be exploring more advanced queries. Now, the part three repo contains all the queries we'll be going over during this episode. And before we delve into match and match phrase queries, let's do a quick review about information or data set. So how to get this information was covered in episode nine. So we're just going to breeze over uh, this part. So scroll to search queries, then down to expected response from Elasticsearch. Okay, so in previous episodes, we added a news headlines data set into an index we called news headlines. Now this is what our document looks like. 
It contains fields such as date, short description, link, category, headline, and authors. Now, let's scroll down to aggregations requests, then down to expected response from Elasticsearch. So the headlines, the documents belong to various categories such as politics, wellness, entertainment, and others. So now if we brushed up on what our data looks like, let's get back to the match query and the match phrase queries. So scroll down to full text queries. Now, when we're searching for things in a text field, like the field headline, there are multiple queries you could choose from. Now, the match query is the standard query for performing a full text search. And here is a general syntax. So what we're saying here is get search results from the index I specify here. I want you to query all documents that match the following criteria. Query these search terms in the field that I specified here. Now, a time where a match query shines is when the order or the proximity of the search terms are not as important in finding relevant documents. For example, let's say a user searches for Python programming language. And we have it set up so that the backend sends a match query to Elasticsearch to look for documents that contain these search terms. Now, the match query uses an OR logic. So if a document contains one or more of these search terms, the match query will send the document back as a relevant result. Now, the thing to note here is that the match query doesn't care about the order or the proximity in which these search terms are found. So an example of a hit from this query would look something like this. You could see that search terms like Python and programming and language are scattered across the field content, and they're not found right next to each other or in the order the search term was entered. However, the match query still works in this case because if a document contains all three of these search terms, no matter where it's found, it's highly likely that we're talking about the Python programming language and not Python the snake. So the match query may work in situations like this, but it's not the best query to use when you're searching for phrases. And I'll show you why. So let's scroll down to what happens when you use a match query to search for phrases. Now we know that our data set has an entertainment category, so it's likely to have headlines about popular songs. So we're gonna use a match query to search for Ed Sheeran's song, Shape of You. Now the name of the song is a phrase. In other words, the order and the proximity in which these words are found is important in retrieving relevant documents. So the match query looks like this. The query says, get search results from news headlines index. I want you to query all documents that match the following criteria. Query all documents that contain these search terms in the field headline. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send you'll see that we got more than 10,000 hits. So let's look at the top hit and look at the headline, which reads, fitness test, are you in shape? So here we got two out of three search terms, you and shape, but these search terms are not found in the same order as a search query. As a result, our top hit is completely irrelevant to the song Shape of You. Now, the next hit is pretty relevant. It talks about Ed Sheeran's shape of you. Now, the next one talks about how the shape of your face may affect how much money you make. Now, this hit is completely irrelevant. So if you scroll down further, let's see here, you'll see that a lot of these headlines are about getting in shape. So as you can see, the match query is not quite suited for searching for phrases. And there's a query specifically designed to search for phrases, and it's called the match phrase query. All right, so let's scroll down 
to searching for phrases using the match phrase query, then down to example. Now this is almost identical to the match query, except that the match parameter has been replaced by the match phrase parameter. When the match phrase parameter is used, all hits must meet the following criteria. The search terms shape of and you must appear in the field headline. The terms must appear in that order and the terms must appear next to each other. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. All right. Now you'll see that we got three hits and the recall is a lot lower compared to the 10,000 hits we had before. So let's take a look at the top hit and look at the field headline. It says Ed Sheeran's Shape of You gets an unexpected Latin remix. So this is really precise. If you take a look at the next one, Ed Sheeran joins Jimmy Fallon to play Shape of You. All right, so this is also very precise. And the third one, it says, Maynard absolutely slay this Shape of You sing-off. So all three of these hits contain the exact phrase Shape of You in the headline. By using the match phrase query, we really improved our precision. And at the same time, we reduced our recall quite significantly. So as you can see, the match phrase query does a better job at searching for phrases. And depending on whether you choose to use the match or the match phrase query, you could also alter the precision or recall of your search. All right, we just covered the difference between the match query and the match phrase query and when to use them. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticstat Part 3. So part three is a full length workshop where I talk about the advanced search queries designed to search text fields. We also go over how we could build a combination of queries to answer more complex questions. So if you prefer the full length workshop format, check out the link shown on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of mini beginner's crash course to elastic search and Kibana.